Hello, everyone. In this video, we're going to be debunking Walter Vayeth. And a lot of people have been asking us to debunk him. I'm, I'm not sure why, because I, a long time ago, we went and watched his videos and they were so outrageous. They were so far out there from reality that I was like, nobody's going to believe this guy. And so we swiped it away and we weren't going to debunk him. And then we saw he has something like 200,000 followers for some crazy reason. This man is a former Catholic and now a Seventh-day Adventist. And he was banned from some Adventist churches, it was said, in Europe and Adventist conferences for crazy things he said, especially about the Jews. And so I, I'm just going to warn you up front, this is low-hanging fruit. This might be the worst video we've ever done. I mean, we've done people who are really outrageous, who don't know anything about the Catholic faith. This man is one of the lowest, and it's really sad because he has such a high influence with a lot of people. And this is the same man. We did a one-minute video recently and a, a longer video showing that some people actually believe that Islam was started by the Catholic Church to take over the world. And the plan failed and it led to the Crusades and all of these other hoaxy conspiracy theories that some people believe. We even did a video recently by Kent Hoven who believes this. So it's kind of crazy, but Walter Vayeth seems to believe this. And we're going to see in this video that he thinks Islam and Catholicism are the exact same religion, that they teach the same thing. Listen to what he says in this short clip. Is there a difference between the Catholic theologians and Islam, yes or no? None whatsoever. Who is controlling who? I don't know if he fully subscribes to the Jack Chick conspiracy theory that the Catholic Church started Islam, but he has whole videos showing that the Catholic Church and Islam teach the same thing as we see here. This is nonsense. I really don't know how people could believe it, but more and more people are starting to be influenced by people like Vayeth and are starting to promote this conspiracy theory as fact, even though they have no facts. So that's what we're going to be debunking in this video right after this. Hello everyone, my name is Brian Mercier, President of Catholic Truth, and I'm so happy you're here today. We want to help you to know your faith, love your faith, and live your faith. And if you're not Catholic, we want to help you to know what Catholics believe, actually believe, as opposed to what people say we believe, which are 99% of the times <laughs> different things. And if you haven't checked out our social media, please follow us down below. If you would like us to come speak at your parish, you can see our website, catholictruth.org, down below. And if you would like to buy some merch, or support our ministry, PayPal, Patreon, it's all down below. So without further ado, let's get into what Walter Vayeth says about Catholicism and see if it holds up with reality. This religion has full control of the entire territory which it controls. Now, who and what is Islam? Millions of people make the pilgrimages to Mecca where they worship at the shrine of Muhammad. What a privilege it is for them to make the pilgrimage. There's another religion which also propagates pilgrimages, and that is Catholicism. So you have pilgrimages to Lourdes and the Marian sites and to Fatima. Pilgrimage is a symbol of the great pagan religions of the past as well. So because Catholicism and Islam both do pilgrimages, this is proof that they're the same, that they believe the same things? I mean, this is silly. I mean, does he know how many religions do pilgrimages? I mean, all of the major world religions do pilgrimages. Hinduism, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, Jews, Buddhists. I mean, all the major religions have pilgrims and pilgrimages. Pilgrimages are a very common thing, and Catholics have been doing pilgrimages long before Islam was even started. And Jews and Hindus were doing pilgrims long before Christianity even started. So I don't think this is a good argument that holds up. Muhammad married Kajida when he was 25 and she was 40 years old. Her cousin, Varakwa, was a Roman Catholic, and she came from a Roman Catholic convent. So we could say she was a Roman Catholic nun. Who was Khadija, he says? Obviously, she was the wife of Muhammad, but he says that she's a Catholic nun, a Roman Catholic nun, without any proof. 
We're just supposed to take his word for it. And of course, this is not true at all. This has been debunked even by Protestants. Uh, even if she was a Roman Catholic nun, that still doesn't prove his point. But that is the same claim that is made in this cartoon, literally this cartoon. Cartoon. This is where people are getting information from. A comic book. <laughs> Seriously, a comic book. That's where this information comes from. It was started with Jack Chick. It's promoted by people who don't actually study history, and it's really, really sad. In Catholicism, we find the half moon or the sickle moon with the deities in them. We find Mary replacing Jesus Christ as the mediatrix of all graces. The mediator, the sole mediator and advocate is replaced by Mary. So here in this Roman Catholic monastery, Christ puts the crown of thorns onto Mary, and she has the holes in her hands. I, I tried to warn you. Catholics are either laughing out loud right now or beating their head against their computer screens, just shaking their heads like, what is he saying? He says that this half moon is proof because in Islam, this is a symbol of Islam. It's even on the Islamic flag. The half moon is a sign of Islam. And that's what we see here in the picture of Mary. It's a half moon showing that Catholicism and Islam are apparently the same thing, except for the fact that all Catholics everywhere know this is not a half moon. It represents the horns of the devil on which Mary is standing and Jesus. They crushed the head of the beast and those are his horns and that is his head being crushed. It's not a half moon and it has nothing to do with Islam. Anyone can research it and check it out. Next, he says that we find Mary replacing Jesus as the mediatrix of all graces. Now notice, he doesn't quote anything. He doesn't cite any sources. He just says these things and expects us to take his word for it. He just says, Mary replaced Jesus as the mediatrix of all graces, which of course is false and contradicts the Catholic Church and contradicts everything the Catholic Church teaches, which is why he doesn't quote anything because he could not substantiate such a claim. He tries to substantiate the claim by showing a picture of Mary, and he says that she received the, the wounds of Christ. She had a crown of thorns placed on her head and holes in her hands. Now, first of all, this has nothing to do with her supposedly being the mediatrix of all graces, replacing Jesus, as if that's true. Because this picture isn't of Mary. This picture is not the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's a picture of St. Catherine of Siena. And anybody can go online and research this. There are many pictures of this picture, different kinds, different various versions, but they're all the same thing. There's St. Catherine of Siena who is having the stigmata. The stigmata is that in, in history, some saints, a few saints, have received the wounds of Christ. They've received his stigmata, his crown of thorns in their head, and it bleeds occasionally, and they've received his holes in their hands, like Padre Pio. So literally, this is not the Blessed Virgin Mary. He says this is proof that Mary has replaced Jesus as the mediatrix of all graces, and yet this is not the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's St. Catherine of Siena. So this whole argument just falls apart because he hasn't done his research. What he did is he probably heard this from somebody else. He said, yeah, that looks good. But he didn't fact check it. He didn't actually look it up or do any research. And then he's passing on the misinformation. And that's how so many anti-Catholics, unfortunately, work. Mary is always depicted as coming out of a cave. Now, the ancient deities always came out of a cave. Loyola, the Jesuit, received all his information in a cave. And it is interesting that Muhammad received all of his information in a cave. That's paganism. I, I know my viewers have a hard time watching things that are just really, really bad. And I just want to apologize to all my Catholic viewers out there that you have to actually have to sit through this because it really is bad. And I admit that. And it's really, really low-hanging fruit. But again, we've had a lot of requests to debunk Walter Veith, and so we're finally catering to that. And we're finally doing at least one. I mean, this will probably be the only one ever, but we're doing one and the arguments are really bad and I feel bad for him. So this is a reminder. Anytime you see people so outrageously confused, pray for them. Pray for their souls. Pray for their minds. Pray for their blind eyes. Literally have heart of compassion for them that they are so blind and they don't even see it. Pray for him. 
We made a video not too long ago with Trent Horn from Catholic Answers, and we made a video called How Protestants Argue Like Atheists. How Protestants Argue Like Atheists. And they make the exact same arguments. We showed many different ways that they make the exact same arguments, and Walter Vayeth is exemplifying that here. He's literally doing the exact same thing and making the same exact arguments that atheists make. So how atheists attack Christianity... Protestants attack Catholics with the same level of argumentation. So, for example, atheists will say that Jesus isn't even real. He was plagiarized from ancient pagan gods. Old pagan gods had disciples. You had to eat the flesh of him. He, they rose from the dead. They had people follow him. And they give all of these examples of pagan gods who even look like the old pagan gods. They have a picture a half picture of Osiris on one side and Jesus on the other, and they look the exact same. So their conclusion is that Jesus was ripped off from old pagan religions, and he's not even real, and it's not even clever. It's just Christianity made the whole thing up. And that's what Walter Vaith is doing with Catholicism. He's trying to say that because these two religions have some similarities, they must be the same. That's like saying Russia and the United States have some similarities, therefore they must be the same. They both tried to be the first to get to the moon, therefore they must be the same. Now, of course, people would say, no, that's totally different. That's dumb. Well, yeah, it is dumb, but that's the same argumentation he's making, that each religion has some similarities, therefore they're the same. For example, he talks about <laughs> the caves in Islam, but then he talks about how Mary, for that reason, is always depicted coming out of a cave. Mary is always depicted coming out of a cave. And yet the vast majority of all pictures, all statues, and all art do not have Mary coming out of a cave. Literally what he says about Catholicism and what Catholicism actually has, teaches, is the opposite. And just to show you this, so you don't have to take my word for it, as we're supposed to take his word for it, we're going to show you some pictures of Mary to show that they don't all show her coming out of a cave, not even remotely. There is the monastery high up on a hill. Now, whenever I find a monastery high up on a hill, I'm very interested, because high hills were pagan high places, where they sacrificed to pagan deities. This argument is just as bad as the last one, and it's the same employing of atheist arguments. So pagan temples used to be set up high on hills so that they could sacrifice to their pagan deities. Ergo, Catholic monasteries are put on hills, apparently for the same reason, so they can sacrifice to their pagan deities. Why would pagans have their their temples on hills, then why do Catholics have monasteries on hills? Except, <laughs> this is really, really, really bad. I mean, really bad. The, he just ignores the fact that the majority of monasteries are not on hills. And if he, they are on hills, he has to prove that they're first all on hills, or even mostly on hills. He didn't do that. He's just uh, guessing for both. He's just making an assumption that there's a few monasteries on top of hills, therefore, it's the same as Islam. And therefore, both come from paganism. And that's one of the points he makes in this video, is that paganism comes from, Islam comes from paganism and Catholicism comes from paganism. And he's trying to draw these out by showing that they do come from paganism, but that he's doing a really terrible job because a monastery is on top of a hill. What about all the monasteries that aren't on top of hills? And the fact that we don't make sacrifices to pagan gods in the monasteries on top of hills or not on top of hills. So the whole thing is convoluted and irrelevant. He goes on to say that nothing has been changed to, since paganism. And we just sit here scratching our foreheads saying, how can anyone seriously take this man with that straight face? This man doesn't even live in reality. He's, his arguments are... I don't even know what to say about him. Let's just move on. Here is a Catholic cathedral in Amman. And uh, I'm photographing this Catholic cathedral standing at the mosque. <laughs> so I'm standing on the ground of the mosque and I'm photographing the Catholic cathedral right opposite. Now, it's interesting how Catholicism and Islam stand side by side in all the Islamic countries. And every time, I'm so surprised to see the cathedral and the mosque next to each other. You see, if you know the inside religion, behind the scenes, they're actually the same. This is another example of just trying to stretch your imagination to make something you already believe to be true, and then you're just going to try to find any evidence 
to prove that. It's called a, a, a bi confirmation bias. And again, he's doing it here. He's saying that because there are some churches and mosques in the vicinity of each other or even next to each other, this is proof that Islam and Catholicism are the same. I guess it's only the same when you find them together. <laughs> only when you you find them together are they the same. But in the majority of countries, they're not next to each other. But you would think if Catholicism and Islam were working together, you would find mosques and Catholic churches next to each other everywhere in every country. But what he does is he only goes to the few places where they are found next to each other and says, see, look, they're next to each other. Therefore, they must be the same. They're working together. And he even says that, that under the scene, they're really the same. And he spends a half hour trying to prove it with objections like this. And I am not going to bore you. Literally, he goes on showing church after church, uh, mosque after mosque, the few that he could find showing similarities and really bad similarities like the moon and then the supposed moon, which were really horns and different things like that, like things that don't even hold up, things that hold no weight. He's trying to make comparisons just like the atheists do with Christianity. I mean, here in America, we have Catholic churches and Protestant churches near each other in every town. Does that mean, therefore, that Catholics and Protestants are really working together behind the scenes? You know, underneath it all, secretly, are they working together and they put their churches near each other? Or do churches and mosques and Protestant worship places just happen to be near each other? And it's a coincidence. I mean, seriously, there are way more Catholic churches and Protestant worship places next to each other than there are mosques and Catholic churches. If I look at the symbolism on the outside of the Catholic cathedral, I have the symbol of the sun, because it was the symbol of the sun worship. And the cross, of course, the symbol also of the sun god. And there is the symbol of the sun. How can he say in this section with a straight face? This is how confused he is. Pray for him. How can he say with a straight face that this represents the sun and therefore the sun god? Why would he say that? Because it's what he wants to be true. It's really what he wants to be true. Or... He's been duped by other people. Obviously, he learned this lesson from somebody. A lot of these lessons, as we're going to see in a minute, he learned from Masons. I mean, the enemy of the Catholic Church. So, of course, they're going to say nonsensical things that aren't even in reality. But he's saying these things represent the sun god, which make no sense. In the Catholic Church, these things represent light. And light, whether it's candles or the sun, represent Jesus Christ, who is the true light of the world. He's the true light that enlightens every man, as scripture says. He's the true son of God, S-O-N of God, but he's also talked about as the son, S-U-N, of justice. So Jesus is seen as the son in the Bible, and Jesus is seen as the light, and in fact, he is the eternal light that gives light to everything else, and no light would exist if God himself did not exist. So lights, candles, those things in the Catholic Church, they represent Jesus Christ, the light of the world. But he goes on to say that the cross represents the sun god. Like, <laughs> would anybody who comes across a Christian image with crosses on them, and would, that, would the first thing they, whoa, that's a, oh, yes, I think that is a clear sign of a pagan symbol. Those are crosses. Clear. I mean, the first thing that would come to my mind is pagan. Yes, pagan. Oh, and sun. Yes, crosses mean sun. And those mean the sun god. Would anybody in on earth come across Christian crosses, or any crosses for that matter, and think that they represent the sun god? The sun god. And, and especially in a Catholic church where they have crucifixes with Jesus on them, showing the fact that he died and rose again, he suffered for our sins, rose to eternal life, conquered sin and death, and is alive forevermore because of what he did for us on the cross. And everyone knows that crosses, therefore, are littered throughout Christian art because it's a reminder of what Christ did, and it's a reminder of his, it's a symbol of his sin, of his sacrifice and his victory over sin and death. So how in the world, and this is how much he wants these things to be true because he, he, nobody who lives in reality and has an intellectual honesty can go through these things and say, oh yeah, that's just the sun god. First thing I thought of, yep, definitely. No, of course not. It's not even honest. That's why you need to pray for him even more.
There's a saying that goes, it's better to keep quiet and be thought of a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. And that might be the case here. Islamic dress? Well, you can look at old-fashioned Catholic nuns and you will find that the dress is identical. Catholic nuns wear the same dress as Islamic women of Orthodox faith. Here's another proof that Catholics and Muslims are the same because Catholic nuns wear the same exact dress as Muslims. Yeah. This is his argument. As if everybody didn't dress like this back in the day. Every single woman in creation, way, way back in the day, used to dress like this. <laughs> and yet, the Catholics and Muslims are the same because they dress the same. I'm going to show you some pictures right now showing that many people and many religions actually dress this way. And he's ignoring that fact. He's ignoring that Orthodox nuns dress this way. Jewish women dress this way. And in fact, or Jewish women and Orthodox women, nuns, are actually closer in style to Islam than the Catholic nuns are. And he's ignoring the fact that there are many different variations of the way Muslims dress. As you can see here in this picture, not all Muslims all dress the same. This cartoon picture shows that Muslim women dress different. Some wear the hijab and some wear other things that are have more dressed to it or less dressed to it, but they dress differently. But he says they're all the same, and they're not all the same, not even among themselves. This is a real picture of what Muslim women look like, and you can see the differences. Would you ever see a Catholic nun covered from head to toe, even her eyes? No. By this measure, I guess Orthodox are all Muslims too, or Jewish women are Muslims too, because they dress similarly to women in Islam. They're for, thereby saying that they must be the same. These are the similarities, the things that he either does know and is not telling you or doesn't know and is ignorant of. At best, he could say that some Catholic nuns look like women who wear the hijab. It certainly doesn't look like the rest of them, and he ignores the fact that women around the world, in religion and out of religion, in the old days and even now, dressed similarly. And just because two people or three or four or five dress similarly does not mean they're the same. It does not mean they're doing it for the same reasons. And it does not mean they share the same ideology. That's just a straw man argument. Now, which other religion has the priesthood just for men? The Roman Catholic Church. Um, the Jewish religion the Orthodox religion, all the Abrahamic religions, yeah. To the great Catholic places, this is the place where Mary apparently ascended. Here is the great cathedral in Jerusalem. On the floor you have the solar circle with all the signs of the zodiac, which by the way God forbids, God forbids. And this is the place where Mary lay and then she ascended uh, of course to heaven. She didn't stay dead there on the floor. You have the pagan symbols. You have all of these interesting mitzotoms and what have yous, and the pentagrams, upside down pentagrams, all symbols of Lucifer. Sadly, Walter Vayeth is on the level of Tex Mars, Jack Chick, and a lot of other paranoid conspiracy theorists. And it really is sad. In this section, he talks about astrology and about how the Bible condemns astrology and how the Catholic Church is practicing astrology. And the proof of that is you can see the astrological figures on the church floor around, I mean, in a huge mural on the floor. It's proof that the Catholic Church practices astrology, even though he could probably find this in no other church in the world, but I guess that's irrelevant. So we agree that the Bible condemns astrology, but here's another fun fact. The Catholic Church condemns astrology and going to the zodiac for your future or to try to figure out your personality or anything like that. In fact, I've written the most updated book on the New Age movement, and we have a whole chapter on astrology and the condemnation of it. Why? Because the Catholic Church condemns astrology. So would he know this? He should know this if he's done any lick of research. I mean, the Catholic Church is overt 
It says it in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It says it everywhere that the Catholic Church condemns astrology, horoscopes, tarot cards, anything like that that tries to control fate, time, space, anything else. It's all condemned because it's occultic powers that are not from God. So if he has done his research, which clearly he hasn't at all, he's never, I don't even know if he's read a single book ever or a single Catholic article to ever find out what Catholics believe. But anyone who says, well, the Catholic Church condemns astrology and the Zodiac and all of that, so why would they have that in the church? It would be a good question, but you wouldn't naturally assume, oh, it's because they want to practice astrology. And the answer is because not everyone who uses the Zodiac does so for astrological reasons. In fact, astronomers, real science versus astrology, fake science or pseudoscience, astronomers, real science, use the, uses the Zodiac also. They use the Zodiac in space, but they don't use it for astrological reasons. They don't use it for the same reasons astrology does. They do it for real scientific reasons. Yes, astrologers will say they do it for scientific reasons too, but they also attach spiritual mumbo jumbo to it, trying to figure out your personalities and when you fall in on a particular constellation and that shows who you are and your personality types and all of this other false stuff that astronomy condemns. And factually has disproven. Astronomy has disproven astrology. So the fact that astronomy uses the zodiac still, clearly it's in a different way than astrology. Same thing with the Catholic Church. The zodiac with its 12 signs is closely tied to how the earth moves through the sky, orbit, and other things like that. Naturally scientific observations that astronomers use. So the ancient Christians used to use it in a scientific way as well, to chart the sky, to chart the earth moving uh, orbits and different things like that. Now, that's why astrology is called a pseudoscience because they still kind of do that. But again, they add a lot of nonsense, mumbo jumbo, spiritual stuff that's condemned onto it. Science does not. The Catholic Church does not. It's strictly a scientific practice. It literally has nothing to do with astrology. Notice too, in this next point, this, this is how bad his arguments are, which is why we can't trust any of them. He says that a pentagram is satanic. We all know that pentagram is satanic, he says. But he points to a star, a regular, normal, everyday star, and he says it's a pentagram. And a pentagram is uh, a star which is reversed. Everyone knows the star is reversed, but this isn't a reversed star. This is a regular star, and we all know that a pentagram is an upside down star. So the two parts are up top, and in this star, the one part is up top. So by his logic, all stars everywhere are pentagrams, or at least that's what it sounds like to me. All stars are pentagrams because this is a normal everyday star, and he's calling it a pentagram when everybody knows it's not a pentagram, and pentagrams look different. So on the floor of that Roman Catholic Cathedral, you have the boat, you have the waves, the water, you have the P and the X. Remember that morals and dogma told us that that was the staff of Osiris. So that means it's actually a male phallic symbol, and the boat would be the womb. This is a very naughty picture in a nice setting. In this very intriguing section, he says that this is an obscene picture symbolizing a male body part. <sighs> Would anybody ever think that? No, of course not. But how does he know that? Because Masons told him so. Freemasons, again, the enemy of the Catholic Church. Catholic Church has always held that if you become a Freemason, you're automatically excommunicated from the Catholic Church because their sole goal is to destroy the Catholic Church, which is why we reject Freemasonry. Now I'm guessing, I'm guessing, I don't know, but I'm guessing that he's a Mason because he's getting all this information from Masonry. He's reading Mason books and their literature is so off base, it's preposterous. But the fact that he says it's a symbolizing a male body part, too bad he forgot to mention that this symbol predates Masons. This is one of the earliest symbols and signs for Christ in Christianity. So like centuries and centuries before Masonry ever came about, the Catholic Church was already using this symbol. So how, and not for, not for what he claims, it was a symbol for Christ. 
And if we're realistic about it, it even predates, I've heard, Christianity. It predates Christianity by quite a while. So honestly, who cares what Masons say? If they want to pervert what the sign means, if they think it means that and they've perverted it in their own perverted religion, fine, that's on them. But that's not what it means in Christianity, and he can't show that they're the same thing. The word originally had to do with oracles, or being an oracle, receiving oracles, pertaining to oracles, anything like that. Now, let me ask you a question. Who was the greatest oracle of all time? There were some oracles like the prophets, but the greatest one is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the oracle of oracles, the prophet of God, the son of God, the divine mouthpiece, the one who has come to deliver full revelation to us. So you can see why the Catholic Church would apply that symbol to him. Yes, maybe in the past it referred to oracles and prophecies. Well, guess what? All of that was fulfilled in Jesus Christ, and it refers to him par excellence. So Masonry is nothing other than the ancient mystery religion, and Jesuits are the ancient mystery religion, and Islam is the ancient mystery religion behind the scenes, and who do you think controls it all? Rome. Rome controls it all. So how would you like it if I said that I believe that Islam and Catholicism behind the scenes is one and the same thing? Have you noticed that Catholicism never complains about Islam not allowing evangelism? Because it suits their purpose. It's already Catholicism. In this section, he says that the ancient mystery religion is the Masons. Now I'm trying to figure this out. But the Jesuits and Islam are the ancient mystery religion. So I guess they're all, <clears throat> same thing, it's kind of confusing. But what's not confusing is that he says Rome controls it all. And behind the scenes, Rome is and the Jesuits are controlling everything through the Catholic Church. But the Catholic Church and Islam are the same thing. He said Islam is Catholicism. You heard it with your own ears. You heard him saying that Islam and Catholicism are the same. Behind the scenes, they're all the same. Out front, they might be a little bit different here and there, but behind the scenes, it's all the same. You heard it. It's madness. It's really, really sad that somebody can believe this and teach this and actually say it out loud. Now, that's really hard to believe since the Catholic Church was attacked by Islam for a lot of history. And many Christians were killed by Islam from around the world. I mean, I don't know. I guess they had a falling out, according to this guy. And according to uh, Mr. Jack Chick, they had a falling out. And the Catholic Church had to get back at them and get revenge. And it created this war between them. But apparently they're the same, even though the Catholics, our central doctrine is the Holy Trinity and the divinity of Christ, which is the most sinful doctrine or rejection of the doctrine in Islam. I mean, Jesus is the Son of God in Christianity, but in Islam, that is the sin of shirk. To attribute a son or anyone on the same level as God is the greatest, most unforgivable sin in Islam. So, literally, our core doctrines are different. Like, vastly contradictory, polar opposite, difference. How could he say that we are the same when if you look at, yeah, okay, pilgrimages. All religions have pilgrimages. Oh, well, we both tithe. All religions tithe. Oh, but you do prayer. All religions pray. You know, like, oh, but you dress like this. As we showed, many women dress like that. He's showing things that really could apply to most any religion. And he's ignoring, though, the core doctrines of Christianity, the Trinity, the divinity of Christ, and things like that. He, he might say, oh, but angels. Christians believe in angels. Muslims believe in angels. So do lots of religions, like Jews and others. But the bottom line is our core doctrines are vastly different. I, he, I didn't hear him say anything about that. I didn't hear him address that. He just kind of ignored it because it didn't fit his talking points. Nor will establish a feud between thee and the woman, between thy offspring and hers, and she is to crush her witch. Which one are they quoting? Which one are they quoting? The Catholic Jesuit one. Wow! Fascinating stuff. Let's continue. Uh, same webpage. To Mary, the woman of Scripture and mother of men, who keep the commandments and hold fast to the truth concerning Jesus. Oh, that's an interesting statement. That comparison will make such fun as we get a little bit later into Revelation. The church applies the beautiful words 
of wisdom, she the glow that radiates from eternal light, she the untarnished mirror of God, because Mary is full of grace, the church through Pope Pius has declared her as conceived immaculate, without sin. Very important. Mary has become known as the Immaculate Conception as a result of the apparition of Lourdes in 1851. She is immaculate. Jesus is sinless just because of her, not because of God, because of her. He says that Jesus is sinless because of Mary. <sighs> yeah, Catholics, I know you're either laughing at this, crying, or beating your heads against the desk, but people out there actually believe these things. And you know how popular he is? Do you know why so many people hate the Catholic Church? Because of men like him spreading these lies. If I didn't know anything whatsoever and I listened to him, I would probably hate the Catholic Church too, thinking that the Catholic Church practiced astrology, even though we condemn it. Thinking that the Catholic Church has replaced Jesus with Mary, even though we condemn that. Thinking that uh, Mary was sinless, Jesus was sinless only because of Mary. Like, literally, notice he doesn't cite any sources. Notice he doesn't quote any popes. Notice he doesn't quote any documents. Notice we're just supposed to take his word for it. Like, every other anti-Catholic out there, they don't back themselves up or substantiate their faults claims. Go ahead, I challenge any anti-Catholic, any non-Catholic out there to go read the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which you can find right behind me or across the room. I have several of them. And, or any Council of Trent, any council whatsoever, any official document, and you will see that Jesus is sinless by nature because he's God Almighty. God is sinless. Therefore, Jesus is sinless. He's the eternal word of God. How could he not be sinless? It doesn't even make sense. Second of all, we teach that Mary is only sinless because of Jesus and because of his grace and because of a special grace by him given to her. If he didn't help her, if he didn't grace her, she would be sin, sin, like, sinning like everybody else. The only reason he graced, God graced her in a special way, Hail Mary, full of grace, is so she could sinlessly bear and hold and carry the sinless Son of God. She was the new Ark of the Covenant. God made her and preserved her so she would be a pure, perfect vessel for his eternal, pure, perfect Son. So again, Mary's nothing. She's dust compared to God. And the only reason she's anything at all is because of God. And Walter here has got that reversed. And what information does he offer? None. None whatsoever. And they used Islam first to counteract Christianity, later on splitting it up to get rid of the enemies of Christ, or to get rid of Christ's followers, and then to get rid of all the enemies of Rome. In this section, he says that uh, the Catholic Church used Islam and wielded Islam, the armies of Islam, to wipe out true Christians, true Bible-believing Christians, and, and basically anyone who was the enemy of Rome. And Islam was the weapon arm of the church. Now, this is the exact crazy thing that Jack Chick talks about in his comic books. Notice I didn't say history book. Notice I didn't say encyclopedia. I said a comic book. This is where people are getting information from. It's really sad. And by the way, Protestants, Protestant researchers and historians have looked into these facts because this was all supposed to be given by an ex-Catholic priest who revealed all the secrets of the Catholic Church. Somehow he knew them all. His name was Alberto Rivera. And he has been proven to be a con man. Protestants who have nothing to prove for the Catholic Church have shown that he's a con man. How he made the whole thing up and how all of this is just bunk. But some people actually believe it because they want to believe it. And I've always said that the only people who could ever believe Jack Chick are people who know Zip or who really, really want what he says to be true. And for the record, if you want a deeper debunking of this article, we just made a video called Did uh, the Catholic Church Start Islam? Obviously no. But we go through this comic book and we pull out some of the <laughs> really funny parts, like St. Augustine had armies, apparently, and he had bases, you know, from which the Catholic Church could operate. Wow, you know, facts from history that you would never learn about because history doesn't even know about them. Perhaps Islam, you think, create Catholicism. Can't be because Catholicism was there before Islam. Same doctrine. There's such a strong defense of the divinity of Mary here in the Quran, in the fourth book, attributed to the condemnation of the Jews. 
So Islam is nothing else than Catholicism winning over or defeating Christianity. Again, we have the same stretching imagination here by Walter Veith, the lowest level of research one can employ. He spends literally like 20, 25 minutes, which I've spared you of, you're welcome, trying to show that Mary is esteemed in Catholicism and Mary is esteemed in Islam. Therefore, ergo, they must be the same. Even though, like I said, <laughs> if they were really the same, the Trinity would be in Islam. The divinity of Christ would be accepted in Islam. They're not remotely the same in many doctrines, even pertaining to the afterlife. But facts don't matter, apparently, to people like Walter Veith. And he goes on to say that Muslims conquered true Bible-believing Christians. But notice how anti-Catholics, especially Seventh-day Adventists, always say this. Seventh-day Adventists are rabidly anti-Catholic. And we have two videos called The Lies of Ellen G. White and Her Anti-Catholicism. We spend a lot of time going through her book, The Great Controversy, showing that she has no idea what she's talking about. History doesn't agree with her. And the only reason Seventh-day Adventists agree with her because they haven't studied history. They say, oh, you only study Rome's history. No, I've actually read encyclopedias. I've actually read history books, secular history books that have nothing to do with the Catholic Church. This is what Seventh-day Adventists have not done. But the ones who start to do it, they say, oh my gosh, and they get angry that they've been duped, that they've been lied to by Ellen G. White. She is the source of all of this rabid anti-Catholicism. That's why Seventh-day Adventists are, I mean, pretty much the whole book is Catholicism, takes over true Christianity, and kills anyone who gets in their path. I would hate the Catholic Church, too, if I didn't know any better. And if I read this stuff, I would hate the Catholic Church, too. That's why many Seventh-day Adventists do hate the Catholic Church. They think it's from Satan, but they haven't. They've been duped. And really, they've been duped. Walter Veith has been duped, and very exceptionally duped. And again, what book is he using here? A book written by Masons, not actual history. So who's the one not actually studying history here? We're going by what a religion says about another religion rather than what actual history says. Why in the world would he get his information from Masons when he could just study actual history? What encyclopedias, history books, and historians have said rather than a religion that is known for hating the Catholic Church and seeking to destroy it. We saw how the Catholic uh, scholars changed the Bible to remove Jesus as the sole savior. In this section, he says that the Catholic Church purposely removed all verses <laughs> to show that Jesus is the sole Savior. They changed the Bible to remove Jesus as the sole Savior. Really? Well, this is a Catholic Bible. Listen to what it says. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Likewise, Acts 4, 12 says, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is one name under heaven given among men by which a person can be saved, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has not been removed from any Catholic Bible as the Savior. This is just a lie and a slander from hell. He's bearing false witness, and the Bible specifically says that um, people who slander others will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And this is what he's doing again and again and again and again. And I'm going to spare you the 15 hours I could make of responding to this because pretty much every single thing he says about the Catholic Church is wrong. So why would we even deal with this? I shouldn't even have to make a video about this except for so many people have requested it for some reason. And uh, I mean, he talks about, I've seen really gross conspiracy theories on his channel, which lost credibility a long time ago in my book. But apparently a lot of people like that sort of stuff. Oh, but what if, what if, what if? No. What if? Let's just stick with the facts. And the facts are, he doesn't know what he's talking about on the Catholic Church. And everything he said here has been wrong. Not just a little bit wrong, grossly, fallaciously incorrect. So far off, it can't even be taken seriously. And it's enough to really disqualify him. People should not believe anything he says. If he can't get his facts correct in this area, we shouldn't believe him in anything else that he says. So I hope that you've seen that what people like Walter Veith and Jack Chick and um, John MacArthur and others say against the Catholic Church and what the Catholic Church actually believes are two different things. Holy, two different things, polar opposites. 
And that's why we make these videos. That's why we put up pictures. That's why we make quotes. That's why we show you from the Catholic Bible himself, itself, that it did not remove any verses of Jesus. And people who don't believe me, go read a Catholic Bible. All the verses in the Protestant Bible are in the Catholic Bible. We didn't remove any that had to remove. We didn't remove any at all. In fact, if we talk about removing books, say he's a Seventh-day Adventist, Adventist. And they removed seven books from the Bible. All Protestants removed seven books from the Bible that were there for over 1,100 years. Do you know when they moved them with Martin Luther? No. It was over a century after Luther. Some Protestants removed the seven books. Two centuries after that, we're talking the 1800s, the majority of Protestants decided to remove the books. Why? Because they were cheaper to print and they kind of sounded too Catholic. They didn't even have any good reasons. And if you read the reasons that they did it, they don't have good reasons. We have an hour-long video explaining the history of this if you're interested. We also have videos debunking John MacArthur and other anti-Catholics. If you want to know what the Catholic Church truly teaches and believes, please don't believe lies, people. We are true. If you're a true follower of God, if you're a true follower of God, then you rejoice in truth and not lie and not slander and not error. Because God is a God of truth and he hates lies. Lying is the tongue of the devil. Slander and bearing false witness are the languages of the devil. So people who speak that are not speaking from God, but you know who they're speaking from, the devil, their father. So we have to be very careful. Some people could do so ignorantly and some people just continually to do it again and again and again and again and again. That's what these anti-Catholics are doing. And that's why we make these videos so you can see the truth that will set you free. John 8, 32. So thank you for watching. Please share this with as many people as you can on all your platforms so we can get the truth out there, undo the lies, and help people to know the truth that will set them free. Please like this. If you haven't been here before, welcome. Welcome to Catholic Truth. Please subscribe to our channel so you can get many videos like this. We put out several a week. And uh, we also have a podcast, other social media platforms where you can get daily inspiration. And if you would like us to come to your church, check out our website, catholictruth.org. And if you would like to support our ministry, because these videos are a lot of time and effort and expense to make. So please, please consider supporting our ministry monthly, one time, uh, yearly on Patreon or PayPal. God bless you. And thanks for watching.